Come to the feast, there is room at the table Come let us sleep to this place With the king of all kindness who welcomes us in With the wonder of the love and the power of grace The wonder of the love and the power of grace To the feast, there is room at the table. Come let us meet in this place with the king of all kinds. Welcome. Thanks for inviting us all around to yours again this week as we worship together along with those who are now attending live in our churches across the benefice. And if you would like to join them, do book a place by contacting me. Physical Church is now waking up from a particularly long and strange sleep. It's been a bit of a Rip Van Winkle sort of thing, waking up to a world that will be different. And we're only just beginning to work out what that will mean for us as a benefice and indeed as a wider church. At the end of May, we will be having our annual general meetings, which will help us think back over the past year. And then, well, then we have the job of thinking forward to our future together. And I want you to be a part of that process. This week, we're thinking about Jesus, the Good Shepherd. So let's pray together, shall we? Risen Christ, faithful shepherd of your father's sheep, teach us to hear your voice and to follow your command that all your people may be gathered into one flock to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Love
in a few moments of quiet, let's think of the times when we've made excuses to get out of things that God wanted us to do, or when we've said or done things that were wrong. Let's come to the Lord, who is full of love and forgiveness, and tell him about those things. For turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives, Father, forgive us. Save, Save us and help, help us. For behaving just as we wish without thinking of you, Father, forgive us. Save, Save us and help, help us. For failing you, not only by what we do, but also by our thoughts and words, Father, forgive us. Save, Save us and help, help us. For acting as if we were ashamed to belong to your dear Son, Jesus, Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. Together we say, Father, we have failed you often and humbly ask your forgiveness. Help us so to live that others may see your glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now may the God of love bring you back to himself. Forgive us all for all the things that we have done wrong and assure us of his everlasting love. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, I've got a little quiz for you. It's really simple. We're going to see 14 new job titles and all I want you to do is work out what the traditional title for the job is. And you've got one minute. So how did you do? All but one are, I am assured, real. Uh, can you guess which is the fake? Yep, qualified, unskilled personnel. Although I'm sure we can all think of other descriptions of politicians. Hallelujah. 
through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed are the peacemakers. They should be called the children of God. We meet in the name of Christ and share his peace. So the peace of the Lord be always with you. And And also also with you. you. Let's pause for a moment. Imagine those you'd like to share the peace with. Ask God to grant them his peace. Today's reading is John 10 verses 11 to 18. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my father. Ah, the lovely sheep and their spring lambs, really cute, with a beautiful backdrop of some rolling green hills. Or perhaps the rugged shepherd, weathered and windblown, in one hand his crook and nestled in his arms an orphan lamb. Maybe those rough shepherds of Bethlehem that his mother always talked about, who pitched up at his birth. No, no, none of that is really relevant to Jesus' self-description in our Bible reading. I don't think he's got in mind any actual shepherds of real sheep. Neither is he being original in his wording. He's taking a familiar idea from hundreds of years before from the prophets of the Old Testament, like Ezekiel. Ah, you shepherds of Israel who've been feeding yourselves. Should not my shepherds feed the sheep? I'm against the shepherds. A chapter full of invective against the leaders of the people. Using the analogy of shepherds and sheep, 
with God finally claiming the role of shepherd of the people. And then we find out that the audience Jesus is speaking to are also the leaders of the people, in this case, the Pharisees. Just like God's words to the leaders of the people through Ezekiel, Jesus is speaking to the leaders of his day. You are not the shepherds of my people. I am. And my death will prove how far I'm willing to go to keep them safe. The church uses the pastoral language of shepherd and pastor. We use it a lot and we've used it for a long time. We use it to describe the work of church leaders. We even give our bishops shepherd crooks as a symbol of that role of shepherd. Well, reflecting on Jesus' words and the context, I'm wondering, whoever thought that was a good idea? In the New Testament, there are occasional references to tending and feeding the flock, the actions of shepherding, and one mention of being a pastor. But nowhere are church leaders given the title of shepherd. Always in those passages, the work is in relation to Jesus, the chief shepherd of his sheep. I guess it's expedient to take the title. If we're to feed the sheep, then we might as well be shepherds. And the church is full of sheep. And it's easier to control sheep if they think we're the shepherds and they need to follow and obey. Oh, on behalf of Jesus, of course. Well, look where that got everyone in the days of Ezekiel. The sheep got well and truly done over by their so-called shepherds. Because that's the problem with power, status and the need to control people. We know that. It so easily corrupts. And while we're looking at history, how well have we done? Have the sheep been well cared for? Have all these pastors and shepherds done the job just like Jesus? To be honest, no. We're pretty useless at the job. Of course we are. We're human. And I get the feeling Jesus didn't expect us to take on such dangerous positions anyway. It takes us back to those exaggerated titles for different jobs in setting of the scene. The bottom of the pecking order, feeding and mucking out the animals. And we call it the most reverend archbishop. What sort of shepherd would that suggest? Before long, before long we believe our own deception and become in danger of being like all those other bad shepherds in the past. Just see the news on a regular basis. The evidence is there. So, shepherds and sheep, I'm not your shepherd. And you're not my sheep. Who's the shepherd? Jesus. We are all his sheep. Jesus was challenging the religious leaders of his day but others would have heard him. The sheep heard him. Who is our shepherd? Jesus Christ. We seek him. We follow him. The great psalm got it right. The Lord Bishop is my shepherd? No. The Lord is my shepherd. No intermediary. No under shepherd mentioned. The Lord is my shepherd and your shepherd words of liberation, liberated from the control of human hands, from other shepherds, and liberated from trying to be the good shepherd Jesus never intended church leaders to be. Being a sheep of the good shepherd, it's a win-win for all of us. <laughs>
The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, Jesus took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit, that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. So let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done. done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. So draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you, eat and drink, in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts, by faith, with thanksgiving. So the body and blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. And now may the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with each one of you and remain with you now and forever. Amen.
in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. So 